Hello, we are Amy and Marc from Chateau de Rosière in Ardèche in southern France. Loads of people always ask us how we can afford to run such a massive chateau and estate. Well, today we're going to tell you our grand plan for how we plan to do it for free. Our grand plan involves centuries-old techniques of self-sufficiency and modern technology, especially from the environmental sector. There are so many expenses in running a massive building like this and an estate. Uh, they include water, electricity, taxes, um, what heating. else? Heating. Heating. So many things that can run into tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of euros a year. And a lot of people deal with this by finding out a way that the chateau can earn money, like running weddings there or um, hotels and things like that. But we've decided to come at it from a slightly different angle. And Mark's been doing a lot of very interesting historical research. Historically, estates like this one would take what they had on the land rather than importing it from outside. And in order to try and replicate that, we looked into old treaties of estate management. One of the most famous ones was written by Olivier de Serre, a famous French agronomist of the 17th century, who happened to live quite nearby. Mark has been reading his book uh, every evening in bed and explaining to me how diverse estates used to support themselves both through providing their own resources because usually they were built in a place that had natural resources but also how they um, finance themselves by growing things and producing things on the estate themselves. One of the differences we have is that back in the 17th century, they would have had a huge amount of very cheap, virtually slave labour. And obviously that's not something that we can or would want to do now. So that's why we marry it up with uh, modern technology, which means that we can accomplish tasks much more quickly and using fewer people like just us. In his essays, Olivier de Serre found his inspiration from Roman agronomists who at the time already managed villas the way castles were managed in the Middle Ages. He lists everything an estate needs to sustain itself. First of all, his uh, defenses, because he was living in uh, uncertain times, so you had to protect yourself from uh, bandits or uh, wars. So you had to have a big fortified place where you would be sheltered from the enemies. I think that's kind but of taken care of here now, isn't that, it, for us? That's it. <laughs> Second thing, one of the most important was to get water to that place. So you would build it only in a place where there would already be a lot of springs and you would build a hydraulic system to bring the water to the, the castle. By design, Chateau de Rosière was built on a uh, site surrounded by loads of natural springs. Luckily, quite a few of these were already tapped by the old owners here. And this one, for example, was built with beautiful carved stones and leads right back to a wonderful source in the back the source. We call it a source in French, but it's a spring. And when it's overflowing, it comes over to here and we can see the great state of it. How much water does it hold? About 80 cubic metres. What's that in gallons? A lot. <laughs> For the past five years, we've been trying to uncover the historic uh, hydraulic system of the estate. And one of the key finds was this incredible 19th century cistern. And you'll have seen in one of our old videos, which I'll put a link to here, um, that we found it um, and we've been restoring it ever since. And this summer, although it's not completely watertight yet, it still enabled us to keep using our own water even when everybody else around us was running out, which is key to helping keep our crops alive. Mark's pride and joy is the water system that he's devised based on the theories of Olivier de Serre. The idea behind the water system is that all the springs from the estate converge to the same place and can be redistributed either to storage in cisterns or to water the gardens to be used in the house. So obviously we used modern materials, but the spirit is the same as the 17th century design. 
along with water, although he may not have explicitly talked about it, uh, the idea is that we are resource self-sufficient in all areas. So that includes electricity and heating. No, he didn't mention electricity. <laughs> That's why I said he didn't actually explicitly manage it. <laughs> Write about it. <laughs> All the wood we get from the forest is chipped and goes into a brand new wood chip heating system. The silo holds about 40 cubic meters of wood chips, which is sure to get us through a winter. The wood chips from the silo are fed to the heater through this screw, burnt in there, and that heats the hot water balloon that then redistributes hot water to all the houses of the estate. So just to remind you, we have a 33 room chateau, three houses, six barns, a chapel, um, and a few other buildings around the place. And we will have a greenhouse. And we will have a, a heated greenhouse. And the heating engineer um, based this system on the fact that we'd be able to heat all of that to 20 degrees Celsius when it's minus 10 degrees outside. And to that end, the company who installed this heating system said that it was the biggest domestic heating system they'd installed in the whole of France. The heater is so efficient that we actually don't use a lot of wood chips and we only need to empty the ashtray here only twice a year. In addition to this, we're able to sell extra wood chips to pay for the wood chipping, which means that our heating is now effectively free. Obviously, we laid out quite a lot of money in advance for the system, but it means we're not subject to the vagaries of price fluctuations in fuel. Did Olivier de Serre say anything about sanitation? I don't remember it. He might have done, because uh, he did a really comprehensive treaty. But interestingly, the Roman agronomists did at the time. They, used, uh, they would use the contents of the latrines to fertilize their land. Actually, there's a really comprehensive Roman essay about how they re to reuse the contents of the latrines to fertilize the garden. <laughs> I don't think we're going to be doing that here, are we? <laughs> we will actually be doing it uh, indirectly. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thanks to our eco sewage pond. Mm. I say indirectly because we are going to make a reed bed and the reeds will uh, turn the, the sewage into nitrogen in leaves that we will mulch and put in the garden. Oh, and we can reuse the water from it as well. You're having fun there. <laughs> Now we have water coming all the way to the garden, we're able to produce most of our own vegetables and we hope to increase the production in the coming years. It doesn't hurt our gardening um, ambitions when the view is quite as beautiful as this. Finally, to pay for those things which we do have to buy or pay for, like taxes and internet and telephone and everything else, uh, we're going to try to make the estate profitable in itself. And one of the keys to this is land management. Um, Olivier de Serre talked a lot about how the land needed to be usable and needed to be used diversely. Um, and that's one of our key mantras in how we're developing the estate. So we want to be able to produce our own food and food for visitors, <laughs> but also our own wine. <laughs> that's not just for us, that we might sell. Mm, not sure. <laughs> When we first arrived at Chateau de Rosières, the 130-acre estate was still recovering from decades of monoculture, Douglas fir, commercial forest. We used historical maps of the estates to find and locate all the crop terraces, and we've been gradually restoring them to be able to grow our own food and wine. It's also, you've been looking at the paths, the old historic paths that could, some of them go back to medieval times, haven't you, that were destroyed by some of the commercial forestry and gradually reinstating them as well. Yes, and now we have access to most of our land. 
and we're restoring the historic character of the estate as well. While it might look a bit destructive to be cutting down some of the trees, what we're really doing is uh, restoring the ecological diversity of the estate and also allowing it to be self-sufficient. And we're working with the French authorities um, to do this and we have a very comprehensive management plan. In order to have a healthy and ecologically diverse forest, we need to make sure that the dominant species is not overcasting the rest. So we need to thin the forest every so often and it provides firewood for the house. Obviously, we still have a long way to go on our journey to self-sustainability. We want to experiment new ways of farming like hydroponics. We want to try and produce our own electricity and we will be making a lot of videos about that. Don't forget to subscribe so you get the latest updates on our channel. We hope that you've enjoyed hearing about this today. It's been a really quick overview, but hopefully you've uh, got an insight into our ethos in running this estate, which is to be environmentally responsible and to provide a self-sustaining future for our children on this land and in this beautiful chateau. Since we filmed that with Adonis, we realized we were trying to show you a bit too much in each episode. And also that we've got um, two linked but quite distinctive parts of our grand project here. And so we came to a big decision, which was to launch a new YouTube channel in which we can more properly showcase something, a big aspect of what we're doing here that Mark is particularly passionate about. Um, we're not going to tell you much more here, but we'd like you to click on the link now um, of the video that just comes up somewhere here, 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 and uh, follow on to a video where we will introduce our new channel to you. See you soon.